All right, let's take a sec to talk about the formal definition of continuity at a point. So, um, so here we have a sentence that says, a function f is continuous at x equals c if the following is met, or if the following are met, I guess. But um, this is not an English class, right? So anyways, um, so there's three things that have to occur in order for a function to be continuous at a point. And it's kind of silly because it's like if you just look at a graph, it's so obvious to tell whether something's continuous or not. But this is the formal definition, and this is the three things that have to be met. So um, one thing that has to happen is that um, f of c is defined, okay, meaning that, um, you know, at x equals c, the function f has a value, okay, um, that's, that's definitely important. So f of c has to be defined. Um, and I think it's, as we kind of show some graphs in a second, you'll kind of see how these work here in just a second. Um, also, another thing that has to happen, the limit as x approaches c of f of x must exist. Okay, that limit must exist. All right, and we'll, again, we'll look at examples of when the limit doesn't exist, why it breaks down. And lastly, f of c has to be equal to the limit as x approaches c of f of x. Okay, so again, those are the three conditions that must be met. So I think kind of one of the easiest ways to kind of see why that's the three conditions that must be met are to look at examples where this condition is not met. So let's just say, for instance, we have a graph f, put my x coordinate c right there, and it looks like this. Okay, so let me just do that a little. So that's that hole is supposed to be at x equals c. This is the graph of f. Okay. So in this case, you know, again, looking at it, we can clearly tell this graph's not continuous at x equals c. There's a hole in the graph there. Okay. So let's just see. I mean, if it's not continuous, then that means that you know one or more of these should break down. And if you look right from the get-go, number one breaks down because f of c is not defined. At x equals c, there's no value for f. Okay, so yeah, so you know, it does not meet requirement one, so therefore this is not continuous at x equals c. Although again, we could just clearly tell just by looking that it is not continuous. Let's say I changed it up and did something like this. Okay. Well, now in this case, you know, I've drawn a closed circle right here. So in this case, f of c actually is defined, okay? Let's just say, I'd say like that's a y value of 1, let's say. So that means like f of c would equal 1, okay? So requirement 1 is met, okay? Because whatever the, the, val the y value is at that closed circle is what the value of the function is at c. Um, now moving on to 2, the limit is x approaches c of f of x. Well, you have to look at the limit from the left and the right. And you can notice that from the left and the right, the limit approaches different y values. So therefore, the limit does not exist at x equals c. So 2, it breaks down. This is not continuous, which again, we can just tell by looking at it that this graph is not continuous at x equals c. Okay, definitely clear on that case. Now let's look at another case here. Let's see something like this. Okay. So... <clears throat> Here, the one of those cases, we have that random dot there. So at x equals c, this function is defined. So 1 is, is met, because at x equals c, the value of the function is 1. So f of c is defined. The limit as x approaches c, if I look from the left and the right-hand side, does exist. Okay, let's just say, for instance, that's a y value of 2, for instance, let's say. Okay, so the limit exists, because uh, the y value from, you know, from the left and the right, the y value goes to the same uh, place. And number 3 here, though, does break down, because you know, f of c is equal to 1, this limit as x approaches c is equal to 2, so those do not equal each other, so 3 is broken down. So there's another example where, you know, this does not exist. So there's just a few cases of looking at graphs where you can see where this breaks down, and in each of those cases, the, you know, the graph is not continuous, okay, for, you know, various reasons. And, you know, if, so if a function were continuous at x equals c, let's just say if there's something straightforward and simple like this, okay? So in that case, you know, you can see, okay, yes, yeah, c is, you know, or f of c is defined, let's say it equals 2. The limit exists from the left and the right-hand side, the y values are both approaching 2, so the limit is 2, and f of c, which is 2, is equal to the limit, which is 2. So, you know, there's a simple case where, you know, it exists, all of these criteria are met. Now, I do want to show here real quick what it would look like to have to kind of prove a function is continuous at a point. So let's just say that you were given this function, um, g of x is equal to 
let's say x plus 1 uh, for x less than or equal to 0 and x squared plus 1 for x uh, greater than 0. And you wanted to uh, basically prove that g is continuous at x equals 0. Okay? So by proving it, basically we have to show that it fulfills all of these requirements. Okay, that's what I mean by prove that g is continuous at x equals 0. So, first, we have to go ahead and we're going to, uh, you know, let's start with the first one. f of c. Is f of c defined? Now, of course, in this case, we're not talking about f. I've, I've named this function g. So wherever you see a f, you just we have to replace it with g. Okay? And c is the, the value we're looking at where the function is continuous. In this case, c would be equal to 0. So basically we're saying, is um, g of 0 defined? Well, what I do is I'd look here and see, you know, this is the equation that I would want to use to test g of 0 because this includes 0, this is the, includes the x value 0, and so therefore I just take 0 and plug it in for x, and yeah, it is defined. I get that g of 0 is equal to 1, okay? So g of 0 is equal to 1, so yeah, this is met, okay? The function is defined at x equals 0, all right? Um, the limit as x approaches c of f of x, does that exist? Okay. Well, for that one, and you know, of course we noticed that I chose a piecewise function. AP people like to do this, and I chose the value where it switches from one function to the other at x equals 0. So this is kind of a common one that we'll see to determine whether something's continuous or not. So in order to know if the limit as x approaches c exists, I've got to make sure the limit from the uh, you know, in this case, x approaches 0, i got to know if the limit from the left and the right have to be equal to each other, they have to be the same. So I have the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, limit as x approaches 0 from the left of g of x, which in this case, if I'm looking from the left, I'm looking at values of x that are smaller than 0, which would be this right here, so I'd use the function x plus 1. And that, all I do is just plug 0 in for x to figure that out, and it ends up being 1, okay? I also look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side, okay? Now, from the right-hand side, I'd use this equation right here because this deals with the values of x that are greater than 0, so x squared plus 1, plug 0 in for x, and also I get 1. So, basically, these two together right here show us that, yeah, the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x is equal to 1. Since the left and right-hand limit were both 1, we know the limit just as x approaches 0 is 1 also. So, two works. You know, the limit does exist and it equals 0. Okay? And last but not least, so I'm running out of room right here, but basically at this point we just have to, you know, show that g of 0 is equal to the limit, which it is. They both are equal to 1. So, if I squeeze that in right here, I'm squeezing kind of closer to g of 0 is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x. So, and I kind of write this somewhat sloppy, but basically, so right here, this right here fulfills, you know, the first requirement. This right here, okay, fulfills the second requirement. And this right here fulfills the third requirement. So, therefore, this function definitely is continuous at x equals zero. Now, just, if I were checking it just real quickly in my head without having to go through the formal definition of this, I would have just plugged in zero for x into the top one and 0 for x in the bottom one. And the reason for that, and this is just kind of getting conceptual here, the reason for that is since I know it's a piecewise function, I know what happens at x equals 0 is one graph stops and the other one picks up. Now there's two options. Either this other graph picks up from a whole different y value and it would be not continuous, or the graph picks up from the same y value and therefore would be continuous. Okay, so basically what I would do is I would plug 0 in for x to figure out what y value does this leave off at. So if I plug 0 in for x, I get 1. So this leaves off at a y value of 1, okay, when x is 0. And now I would plug 0 to this one to see what value does it pick up from. So I plug 0 in for x, that picks up from a y value of 1. So therefore, you know, the, the, one leaves off at a y value and the one picks up from y value of 1. So it is a continuous function, as we just saw a second ago by the formal definition.